The songs our people have sung through the years actually represent a musical chronicle of our nation's development. For as music goes hand in hand with life itself, so music goes hand in hand with history. A factual review of our history and the song is presented each week by Colonel McCormick, assisted by the noted folk singer Earl Wilkie, the chorus and the orchestra. Tonight's subject, Tales of the Tall Timber, the story of our pioneer lumberjacks and the conquest of the great forests. Ladies and gentlemen, by special transcription, Colonel Robert R. McCormick. Probably our nation will never again produce a replica of the old-time American lumberjack. This notorious tiger of the timber called himself a shanty boy because the place he called home was a shanty in the woods. In his own words, his life was dedicated to letting some daylight into these swamps, and he did let daylight in. 3,000 miles of it from Maine to Washington. The American lumberjack fitted his strength against a vast labyrinth of tall timber and came out victorious, hacking and sawing trillions of feet of lumber, the bulwark of a growing nation. It was an American lumberjack who gave birth to the greatest of American legends, the legend of Paul Bunyan. In the shadow of the tremendous tree he had to tackle, the lumberjack was an insignificant David facing a mighty Goliath. Against such tremendous odds, the shanty boy pitted a monumental figment of his imagination, incomparable Paul Bunyan, a fanciful figure whose size and prowess matched the gigantic job. Against such tremendous odds, it was a great comfort and relief to have Paul around. According to the lumberjacks themselves, Paul Bunyan was born down in Maine. When he was only three weeks old, Paul rolled around so much in his sleep but he knocked down four square miles of standing timber, and the government got after his folks and told them they'd have to move away. When he was only seven months old, he picked up a cross-cut saw and sawed the legs off his dad's bed. He was destined to be a great logger, and a great logger he was. During his fearless lifetime, with the assistance of the American lumberjack, of course, Paul Bunyan cut enough timber to build a four-foot walk from here to the moon. The day Paul Bunyan was created in the mind of the American lumberjack was a fortunate day for without him, without the countless jokes about Paul's achievements, without Paul's come on for the greenhorns, our nation's foundation might never have been laid. Without Paul, the raw materials might never have been available. But even with Paul at his side, the American lumberjack needed something else to lighten the tremendous load. He needed the inspiration of song, and borrowing melodies from hearsay or memory, he made up his own words as he acts left awake of fallen giants. Oh, a shanty man's life is a wearisome life, although some think it void of care. Swing in an axe from morning till night in the midst of a forest so dreary. Lying in the sand, he bleak and cold, while the cold, stormy, wintry winds blow. And as soon as the daylight does appear, to the wild woods we must go. Oh, the cook rises up in the middle of the night, saying, hurrah, brave boys, it's day. Broken slumbers of times are past as the cold winter night wiles away. Had we rum, wine, or beer, our spirits for to cheer as the day so lonely do dwell. Oh, a glass of any stone while in the woods alone for to cheer up a troubled mind. The American Lumberjack song went a long way towards making bearable his long hours, low pay, bad food, and months of isolation in the woods. After 12 to 14 hours of work in sub-zero weather, his song helped greatly in keeping the taut nerves from breaking. At night in his lonesome shanty, the pioneer lumberjack sat on the deacon seat in an atmosphere of tobacco smoke and profanity and eased his mind with song. 
The deacon seat was a board extending from the lower tier of bunks and running square or oblong around the shanty. From this primitive deacon seat, many a tale has been told and many a song sung. It was on a deacon seat. Some say it was in Canada, others claim Michigan at its origin. But one of the best known of the lumberjack songs was created. It's a song that tells of a great piling up of logs in the river and the heroism of a young foreman named Monroe. The song is called The Jam on Gary's Rock. Come all ye troop on shanty boys wherever you may be. Come sit ye on the deacon seat and listen unto me. I'll sing the jam on Gary's Rock and a hero you should know. The bravest of all shanty boys, the foreman, young Monroe. T'was on a Sunday morning, never daylight did appear. The logs were piling mountain high, we could not keep them clear. Cheer up, cheer up, my river men, your heart We'll break the jam on Jerry's rock, right foreman, young they had not picked off many till Monroe to them did say, I must send you up the drive, my boys, for the jam will soon give way. It carried off the boiling flood, our foreman young. No one has ever been able to satisfactorily prove the locale of Gary's Rock. And the foreman of the song, young Jack Monroe, who perished when he hauled away the key log to break the jam, had been called both Canadian and American. The importance of the song, however, lies in the fact that the pioneer lumberjack was ever close to death. Without warning, a driver might be ground under the runners of a sled out of control on an icy hill. A good axman or swamper might meet sudden death at a slight change in the wind, send a tree falling in the wrong direction. On the river, bad judgment of the railways might bring tons of logs crushing down on the lumberjack. And the men who rode the whirling, twisting logs down the spring freshets toward the mill might disappear without warning. It was usually small streams that carried the long drives in the spring, streams that were filled with rapids, rocks, and falls. When a jam occurred, thundering logs piled up end on end, and the danger was greatest. It was up to the river man to scatter over the jam, tugging and hacking, trying to find the log holding the others back. The key log. Once the key log was pried loose, thousands of logs would tumble end over end with the force of the entire river behind them. The men who pried the key log loose had to run for their very lives, skipping and careening, slipping across the leaping logs, hoping to make the river's bank and depending on their daring and sure-footedness for survival. Anyone who went under had no chance. They found him they'd hang his boots on the limb of a big pine tree as a memorial. Usually he was never found. The hero of the jam on Gary's Rock is probably a mythical hero representing all the loggers who have gone under as the key log drifted clear. In the history of our pioneer lumberjack, young Monroe lives everywhere. In Canada, New York, Pennsylvania, Maine, or Michigan. In Oregon, Washington, or California. Wherever a tree has fallen in the history of our progress, the spirit of our pioneer lumberjack lives on. It's a spirit unafraid of anything that walks or crawls or flies. The spirit of Paul Bunyan, who rolled around in his sleep when he was three weeks old and knocked down four square miles of standing timber. It's the spirit of a brave man who faced the tall timber with an axe in his hand and a song on his lips. It's a spirit that dwells eternally in every board and plank in our nation, in every piece of furniture, even in the newsprint of our daily papers. The spirit of the pioneer lumberjack dwells everywhere within the structure of our republic. It's comforting to know that Paul Bunyan is ever near, waiting to see us through any task that lies before us. The bigger and the more impossible, the better. on clover shady bank one evening last July a mother of a sandy boat and also was a cry 
Driving so logs on the clover And you will never get your pay Why didn't you stay upon the farm And feed the ducks and hens And drive the pigs and sheep each night And put them in the pen Then to drive so long down the clover And you will never get your pay Now all young men take this advice If e'er you wish to roam Be sure and kiss your mothers Before you leave your home And the drive saw logs down the floor, and you will never get your pay.